In this video, we're going to have a look on how you can run our Azure Kubernetes service on premises in your own data center. Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a program manager for Azure Hybrid at Microsoft. Uh, we heard from customers that they love our Azure Kubernetes service because it's easy to manage, it's secure, uh, it makes it easy to run Kubernetes. But in some cases, there are needs to not just run Kubernetes applications in Azure or Azure Returns, there are reasons to run it on premises in your own data center or edge location. So that is what we're offering with AKS on Azure Stack HCI or even on Windows Server. So it's obviously hybrid by design. It uses Azure Arc technology to do all the management for AKS uh, as well. And it runs Linux as well as Windows apps, right? Windows containers and Linux containers side by side. So if you have a mixed app or you do modernization of your Windows applications, you can do that too. And then obviously you get all the benefits because it's delivered as a service when it comes to security or update processes and so on. So we wanna make it really, really easy for you that you can actually run Kubernetes in your environment. And now this also works on like one node, two nodes, three nodes. So depending on the size of your physical environment, you can really scale it depending on where you need it. We have customers running that, for example, on like six, seven node clusters in their data center, or they run it on one physical node at their edge locations, depending on where you need and how much resiliency you need. So let's have a look how that actually looks like. So. If I'm already like doing some work, uh, you're probably familiar with Windows Admin Center, which you can use to manage your Windows servers and your Windows clusters. Now, this is also very great to manage your Azure Stack HCI clusters. And again, in this case, I'm gonna use Azure Stack HCI, but it would also work with a Windows Server cluster. So what I'm gonna do here is, I can go and start managing my Azure Stack HCI cluster. And here you can see that is what opens up. So I get an overview about that cluster. Again, this is just like I can see the physical nodes and the virtual no uh, machines here running on that system. I can see the storage, I can see the utilization. I get all this great overview about the physical uh, environment and what is running there. And even connect Azure Monitor to monitor all that with Azure Stack HCI. But we wanna have a look at the Azure Kubernetes service. So what I did here, I already installed the Azure Kubernetes service and I already created a Kubernetes cluster. So here's AKS Hybrid 01. You can see which version of Kubernetes I'm running right now, the healthy state. Uh, I can now download the kube config file or change some settings on that cluster. But let's add a new cluster so you can see how easy that actually is. Then we have some basic setup. So I told you we have this hybrid integration with Azure Arc and I'm gonna show you that in just a bit how that works, which is absolutely awesome. So I'm gonna uh, see that it's basically used to manage and secure and govern your Kubernetes clusters, but then also to like deploy applications on that using GitOps. Um, because it's an Azure integration, you need to just select your Azure subscription, uh, your resource group in this case, I already created one here for that cluster. And then I can join, like uh, basically say on into which Azure region this AKS cluster is connected to. It's not running in that region, it's like just connected to that. Uh, I provide a local user, um, which is like admin of the uh, underlying HCI or Windows Server cluster. And I give a name to the Kubernetes cluster here. So in this case, just call it AKS Hybrid uh, 02. Super simple, again, you can choose what you want. And then we're going to talk, like see about the version of Kubernetes you want to deploy. So let's take 22.6 22, um, uh, 22 in this case. And then you can also go and like select uh, uh, the VM sizes for the load balancer and the control plane and how many control plane nodes you actually want to deploy. Let's keep it for one uh, to keep it simple here. Next up, we're gonna create a node pool. Um, so we can create multiple node pools if you want to. So let's create one here. Uh, let's call this one Linux node pool two. Uh, and then this, as you can see here, I could choose uh, what the node pool is, if it's Linux or Windows. The control plane um, is always Linux in this case, but then if you wanna run Windows containers, you can do that too. 
it will ask us about Active Directory integration. Now this is not extra Active Directory, this is now our Active Directory integration. So if we have a local Active Directory and want to and use that for authentication, we can do that too. And then we come to the network setup. Now here I can basically create a new network interface, a new network, uh, virtual network basically for my Kubernetes cluster, but I already created one beforehand uh, when I set things up. So I'm gonna use that. That's all the IP addresses and IP configuration, for example, we're gonna use uh, when, for that specific cluster. And then I can choose some other network configuration uh, things as well. And then you just hit the create button and this will create your Kubernetes cluster. It will take a couple of minutes. It will spin up all the necessary VMs um, for your control plane and for your uh, work nodes as well. So that is basically how simple it is to deploy a new Kubernetes cluster on premises or at the edge using AKS on Stack HCI or Windows Server. Now let's talk a little bit how management works, right? You saw um, how you can, for example, use Windows Admin Center. Uh, and in some cases this, like you want to use that, but uh, you also want to use, for example, PowerShell to do that or other tools. Uh, and I promised you to show you the Arc integration, how you can manage your um, Kubernetes cluster using Azure Arc directly from Azure. So let's have a look at the different options here. And I'm just gonna do that very quickly. So one thing we have obviously is a PowerShell module, which you can set up your Kubernetes clusters, or you can manage them. Like if you need, for example, to scale uh, later out or change or do upgrades, you can do that through PowerShell and some pieces also do that. And if we now go back quickly, I also wanna show that again, the Windows Admin Center uh, view, you can now see for, for example, the virtual machines. In this case, I can create my own virtual machines for my classic applications, but you can also see here that I'm also running obviously the control plane nodes, as well as um, the node pool machines here, uh, and the load balancing machines uh, on these two physical nodes. Now, since I'm using Arc, you can see here for the one I created beforehand that's already ready. I can hit here the Azure integration and it will directly open up the Azure portal directly on my Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. So this is pretty handy because now it looks like an Azure resource, right? It's similar, it's part of a resource group of a subscription. I can see here what, what actually information we have and on the right side, I can see um, what version it is running and so on. To the left side, I can see some interesting things. I can see the activity log, I can use role-based access control. I can also integrate it with Microsoft Defender uh, for cloud and Microsoft Defender for containers to get security recommendations and get security incident information. We also get this Kubernetes resource browser. We also have that for AKS in Azure, but you can also use that now for your Arc enabled Kubernetes service with AKS. So you can see here like what workloads are running without even using the kubectl commands. You can just go through, you can see the pods you're running uh, and the containers and namespaces. And then you can do much, much more. One thing I wanna show you, for example, is also the monitoring. So you get Azure monitor integration, so like related to containers. You can see here the cluster utilization um, in terms of CPU, memory, and you can see what, what's going on. And if you go down, for example, you can also look at uh, even individual containers um, here uh, and see how are they running, right? You can see some like system-based containers and then you could also see your workloads. And then if you need some logs, you have also have logs integration. So you can go and for example, uh, get your kube events, for example, in this case. So let me show all the kube events for the last seven days. And then you can see here, I get these logs and I can get that information. I can configure that the way I want it or need it. Um, and then these are stored in a log analytics uh, workspace. Now, if I wanna deploy an application, I can use GitOps and Flux. Um, so for example, what I set up here is uh, I have my application and my configuration here in a Git repository, in this case GitHub, but it also works with private Git repositories running somewhere. And I configured it that it pulls every three seconds for changes. So here's my application. I took all my web design skills, right, uh, as you can see. And you can see here it's running locally. It has a local IP address because it's running locally on my AKS on Azure Stack HCI. So here is the Git repo and the configuration here. And if you scroll down here, um, you see here we configured a message uh, uh, part, which we wanna change. So if we go and edit that one, uh, again, don't do that at home. I'm gonna do that directly uh, in the main branch. So I can do like say, hello, hybrid AKS. 
Uh, at least I do a commit message, right? Uh, uh, at least I'm a half decent admin, so I'm gonna commit this to my main branch here. Again, usually you would obviously go to different branches um, um, to do that and have approval steps and so on. But now if I go back to my application in the browser and I wait for a couple of seconds and I talk long enough and then hit F5, you can see here the changes immediately here. This is pretty cool. Think what I just did. I change the code, like if I'm a develop the developer, change the code, right? And I approve the code and submit it to the main branch. And then through the Azure control plane, the um, we basically said, okay, there's a new change and we configured that the AKS cluster running on premises or at the edge got up and checked out if there's a new version in this Git uh, repo and basically pulled down the changes and basically changed the application. Now. We would say, well, you could also directly push this out, right? But there's some advantages with, with doing that. First of all, with Git, I can obviously add approval steps. I can basically go out and see what the changes were. I can also revert. And then secondly, think about if I not just have one Kubernetes cluster with that application, I have now thousands or, or hundreds of these. I could do that uh, in a couple of seconds. I would update all the applications. Now, might be not a good idea, might be on a, like do that staged at least, but again, you see how easy it is to go out and update that application. I mean, this is now great. I can now run like cl classic uh, uh, applications running in virtual machines. I can then run my own uh, container-based applications running on AKS on Azure HCI. But what we also do with Azure Arc, we actually allow you to deploy Azure PaaS services or Azure services on premises. And all you need for that is actually a Kubernetes cluster, which you connect up with Azure Arc. And since AKS does that by default, we can now leverage that. I can now deploy things like web apps, logic apps, uh, Azure SQL managed instance, and so on, on premises in my edge location or my data center using Azure Arc. So one thing you need to do first is you need to create a custom location. Now I already created two custom locations for my AKS clusters, uh, at least one AKS cluster, which runs on premises here. And then I even have a, a Kubernetes cluster running at another cloud provider, which you can also leverage even. Basically it's a one-to-one -one <laughs> mapping, if you will. It installs a couple of extensions to it to make it work as well. But it's like, okay, I now have a custom location where I can deploy that app to. So if I scroll down all the way, you can see here data services, so I can deploy SQL managed instances, Postgres, uh, but then also, for example, um, app services and logic apps and functions, event grid and so on. So let's deploy a new web app. And in the web app, uh, I go through the browser in this case, but again, I could also leverage ARM templates, Bicep and so on to do that. Pretty similar if you did that before with a web app in Azure, this is, looks exactly the same. So what you would do is you select a, a uh, subscription, the resource group, and you give that web app a name and you say, okay, what, what it gets published to, runtime and so on. Now the big change comes here with the Azure region. Like by default and in your setup, you have access to all your Azure regions which you have access to. Um, if you scroll all the way up, what you can see here is custom locations. Now you can see here that these are the ones I showed you. Basically these are Kubernetes clusters in this case. Uh, and the one is my AKS cluster running on Azure Stack HCI. Um, and I called this location Tom's Data Center 01. So I can select that. And now I can deploy a web app on that Kubernetes cluster directly from in with Azure, right? And I can take advantage, I can mix this up. Uh, and deploy basically my application and mix it also. So if I have an application architecture where I run classic VMs, I run containers on Kubernetes, and then I also wanna use PaaS services, I can all put this together or use it separately, whatever I want. And then um, we have, like if you look at this from an architecture perspective, we have obviously hardware for Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server, uh, and then you run Azure Stack HCI or Windows Server, the operating system, you can then create Windows or Linux VMs and run your applications. And then you can basically run our AKS service, as I just showed you, on Azure Stack HCI or Windows Server. And this allows you then to deploy your containers and your Arc enabled services, such as I just showed you with web apps. And so you can really build your cloud native application experience and manage that all through Azure Arc. So I hope this was helpful and it showed you how you can actually uh, run AKS on-premises or edge locations. 
and manage it through Azure Arc. If you liked that video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one.